Hey everyone, so for today's video, I'm going to be doing a kind of Chanel brand overview. I have like 12 different Chanel products to talk about. I really hadn't tried anything out from Chanel. I wanted to dive into the brand, kind of experience the formulas and the textures, and give you guys an idea of the formulas that I think are really luxury, worth the high price tag, and the products that I would personally skip. I really found some incredible products, so let's just dive in. So if you guys enjoy the video, definitely make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you like me, I would love to have you back. So make sure to subscribe as well. Let's first start off with a product that I was getting a lot of comments about. A few of you were like, Amanda, you need to try the Le Beige Water Fresh Tint from Chanel. You would love that product. So that's the first product we're going to talk about. They call it a Water Fresh Tint. Um, this has actually more of a water gel texture. You can kind of see within the actual component that, that it's a gel with these little dots of pigment suspended throughout. As you kind of massage the product, it melts and those pigments melt down to become a skin tone. Super interesting. It is reminiscent of these kind of shades matching formulas that have come out. But I've never seen it quite executed this way. You can use it in a few different ways. They say that you can use it as a primer, you can use it as a touch-up product, or you could just use it all over the face as a skin tint kind of foundation product. So this is more of a gel texture. It just immediately melts down into the skin to feel very much like water. I think they actually say that 75% of this product is water, which immediately I'm like, okay, so this product better be good because if I'm paying for 75% water, the formula better be on point. But yeah, the texture wasn't as fluid as water. It almost kind of felt like a water gel kind of serum texture. As you can imagine, applying a skincare product has that bit of comfort and this definitely had that comfort. Those little dots of pigment, they're not like beads. You can't feel them on the skin whatsoever. It's not like a gritty texture, which I was a little bit worried about, but I am very happy to report they kind of just like melt into the skin kind of like like snow like a snowflake is that a weird way to describe it i'm not sure this product is by far the most untraceable makeup foundation skin tint product that i have ever used when you put this on the skin it does not look like product you cannot see a single streak of coverage I really have not used another product like it. It is just the most untraceable and flattering skin tint. The product is very, very sheer, as you can imagine. This is not a light pigment product. It's sheer. It's just going to very slightly take down any redness that you have, but if you have freckles, if you have a really bright pimple or something like that, it's going to shine through. But it makes the skin look radiant and it kind of just very softly adds that sheer coverage. I really couldn't believe it the first time that I tried it. And the way that I applied it is with the foundation brush that they give you. You know, a lot of brands, they include these little dinky brushes and you're like, uh, that's not gonna work well. This is an incredible brush for this product. It applies it absolutely perfectly. So I highly recommend using the brush that comes with it. Yeah, I just put a little bit on the back of my hand. I activate the product and mix it on the back of my hand. And then I just use downward strokes to apply it to the skin. And it just looks so incredible. I love that it's just not recognizable as a foundation product. Honestly, we all talk about no makeup makeup products, but there are plenty of no makeup makeup products that look like makeup. And most of the time I need a little bit of coverage, you know what I mean? But this is truly the first product that I've used that just makes the skin so softly filtered, just that very soft, sheer coverage, a freshness. It's not too dewy either. There are a lot of skin tint products that lean more dewy. This one is just, there's just that radiant freshness about it. I see this as absolutely perfect 
summertime makeup because summertime makeup you don't want anything too heavy you don't want to feel like you're wearing a lot of product so this is like perfect for the beach perfect for just running around immediately going to go and purchase this in more of my self tan shade because i feel like the formula would work so expertly for that kind of look i definitely want to put my sister onto this as well because she really prefers more of a sheer kind of foundation look so yeah to all of you asking about this product um recommend Recommending the product, you know me very well. This is by far um, a standout product from Chanel for me. But let's talk about the foundation that is on my face today. I wanted to try two different Chanel foundation products, especially because this one was so sheer. I kind of wanted to try out another one with a little bit more coverage. So I tried out the Le Beige Healthy Glow Foundation. I certainly see this as kind of like a step up from the water fresh tint. It's more of a light to medium coverage. So again, it's what I'm wearing on my skin today and this is the shade BR12. It's a little bit more pink than I would normally go for. I might check out B10. I think that one's a little bit more yellow. Oddly enough, I find this texture to also be very thin and watery. That's not something that I was even really expecting from Chanel products, but they definitely work with more thin textures. And there's a lot of different textures to talk about, but I was kind of surprised that this healthy glow foundation would be so thin. On the skin, it actually looks quite creamy. It has a really kind of creamy natural finish a lot of you guys know that i am a big fan of more of a creamy natural finish i think that that's very flattering on the skin and that's certainly something that i really enjoy about this product i think it's unique that it gives such a creamy natural finish while also being quite thin it's definitely more lightweight as well it's not like weightless on the skin but i like that it's a little bit more lightweight we're dealing with light to medium coverage here i like that you can kind of build it up in the areas that you need to without it looking heavy or you can shear it out onto the areas you don't need as much coverage and i don't really find this to be a really really dewy product i like that it looks very natural on the skin i like that it sits very closely on the skin with a thin texture like that you can get more of a skin-like look i do wish that there wasn't a fragrance to the product it's not something that i smell once it's on my skin unlike the girl on foundation so the scent is isn't overwhelming but I do wish that Chanel would take the fragrance out of their products but yeah I have no complaints I like that it's a very healthy and kind of natural look on the skin I was actually worried that this might have a lot of alcohol in it I know that the Vita Lumiere has quite a bit of alcohol and I don't really like alcohol in my foundations but this one does not and it still looks really thin and fresh on the skin so yeah if you want a little bit more coverage you want a step up from the water tint but you still want a very skin like look i think that this is a really nice option you just have to find the right shade for you i feel like once it's on the skin it oxidizes like maybe a fourth to a half of a shade a little bit darker so that is something to keep in mind and next another product that i have been getting like a ton of comments and questions about this is a shadow that i've been wearing in a few videos and every time that i wear it i'm getting comments like what is that on your eyes well it's also what's on my eyes today it is the illusion de ombre shadow in the shade new moon i had actually known about this shadow for quite a while and it was definitely kind of like a cult favorite shadow product from chanel but ultimately this was one of the most kind of hyped up products for me one of the products i was the most excited to try out i really had some pretty high expectations especially because i try out so many products in this vein i really wanted this to perform beautifully and this did not disappoint so if you guys are familiar with products like the hourglass scattered lights or the bodyography glitter pigments this to me is kind of somewhere in between those two products it has a very very creamy texture in the finger it just kind of melts into the finger in a very beautiful way you can tell that the pigments are extremely finely milled just pretty reminiscent of the hourglass scattered lights but these have a little bit of that richer texture like the bodyography glitter pigments for me being able to have a product that's very thin 
and finely milled, but a little bit more creamy with a little bit more pigment, it makes for like the perfect formula. This formula, I think I prefer to both the Bodyography Glitter Pigments and the Hourglass Scattered Lights, and that is saying a lot. It's really just, it's perfection. So not only is this formula incredibly unique, but this shade is just so, so incredible. You can get so many different variants of color just with this one shade. You can shear it out a little bit into the crease and get a little bit more of that just slightly taupey pink, nearly almost peachy kind of look. It can kind of just wash out into the crease and look very, very natural. Or you can use a finger and apply it onto the lids for more of that high shine effect. And when you do that, it really comes alive. It becomes this like ultra wet looking, taupey, pinky, slightly purple color. It's really, really incredible to watch and experience. So not only is the color incredible, but the formula and the way it's so versatile on the lid, I think is really what makes this unique. Because even as a sheer kind of wash of color, it still has that glossiness and that glossy effect. But when you really amp it up, it's just the most beautiful, undone, taupey, glossy gorgeousness. For me, luxury beauty is really just about taking it up a notch and creating something that feels inspired. And for me, New Moon is absolutely one of those products. Another cream shadow that Chanel is known for are the Ombre Premieres, and I got mine in the shade Pantene Bronze, which is another one of those kind of classic cult favorite Chanel shadow shades. This is a completely different formula. The formula is really, really creamy, but there's also kind of a lightness and an airiness to it. It's not necessarily moussey, though it will kind of give into the finger when you put your finger into the pot. It still has a little bit more density than something like the Tom Ford Cream Color for Eyes or the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize. This one to me is a little bit closer to like a MAC paint pot. For me, it's really like an optimal texture. The formula feels both classic and also just a little bit elevated. It's that much more creamy. It's that much more smooth. The shade is also really up my alley because it's more of that kind of cool tone bronze look. There's almost like a touch of a kind of green, just that slight kind of olive undertone. Again, these shades are what I'm expecting when it comes to luxury. I want a shade that's really unique that I can't just readily dupe. I also think that this is a really nice, more long wearing shadow. For me, if I want more of a soft, but still smoky look, I can apply this all over the lids, blend it into the crease on the lower lash line and just be done. It's not as light reflecting as New Moon, obviously. To me, it just feels like a nice kind of go-to stable cream shadow. Yeah, I think that it's also a really, really beautiful shadow. And we have one more shadow. Yeah, I just had to try a bunch. You guys know cream shadows are my thing. I also wanted to try the Chanel Ombre Lacquer. How do I pronounce this? If you can speak French, let me know down below. So I have the shade Desert Wind. And with a liquid shadow, I'm always a little bit more skeptical because I find that liquid shadows for me are just a little bit harder to execute because some liquid shadows kind of dry down too fast so you can't get a nice blend. Sometimes they look drying on the lids because they're more of a thin um, texture. So I just have high expectations when it comes to this kind of formula. And I find that this is just a really unique texture. So this definitely has quite a lot of pigment. I actually wasn't necessarily expecting so much pigment, but the texture is still incredibly thin and it washes out in a very, very beautiful way. I actually find that you can very readily blend this in with a finger, which is not always the case with a liquid shadow, but when they blend out, they really, really set down. So this, again, is more of a kind of budge proof one and done shadow I have found. The shade is really, really beautiful. And it's also nice because it's a soft metallic. Um, it still has a little bit of that glossy look, but again, it's going to last a little bit longer. It's actually kind of reminiscent of a much 
thinner version of the Danessa Myricks color fixes. Those have a little bit of a creamier kind of texture to them, but they set down pretty budge proof. Uh, these remind me of that, except more of a thinner liquidy texture. Because this is in a doe foot applicator, it also makes it really, really easy to apply. Incredibly thin, but they still have a beautiful light reflection quality to them. I'm really loving these Chanel textures because they're just refined enough that they're not going to look chunky, but they're not underwhelming. They're not lacking in pigment and shine. So across the board, well done on the cream shadows. I haven't tried any of their powder shadows. These were definitely enough of an investment for me for the moment. I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but I also picked up this highlight. It's the LeBeige Sheer Healthy Glow Highlighting Fluid. I have the shade Pearly Glow, and this is a really, really thin, watery texture. It's an illuminating fluid, so you can use it mixed into a foundation on top of a foundation as more of a primer. It's a really versatile product in that sense. And it's also very thin like the LeBeige foundation. So I understand why these kind of go together, why the textures would make sense together. I really like that this gives you such a soft kind of glossy look. It's not too high shine and it's also not too subtle. So I like that they've kind of found that balance, that sweet spot. I can really see someone enjoying this if you want more of a thin textured highlight to use all over the skin or mixed in or whatever, and you don't like more cream highlights, you still want a really pretty glossy glow, but you struggle with those more emollient creamy textures. This is very thin and it kind of sets down on the skin. It doesn't remain really tacky. But personally, I found that my skin was like needing more moisture moisture from a product like this. And I was actually finding that when I applied it to the tops of my cheekbones, I just found it to be like, I wanted a little bit more. I think it's just because the texture is so thin. My skin soaks up moisture from whatever product I put on and this just wasn't giving me enough. I can see it working better for those of you with maybe more combination to oily skin, but for me, I was just looking for a little bit more moisture. I much prefer like my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. That kind of thin texture I think works better for my skin. So for me personally, this would be a pass. Again, I know we're kind of jumping all around here. Um, Another kind of cult favorite product are are the Rouge Coco Flash lipsticks. Specifically in the shade Boy is like this cult favorite shade. I remember looking at this lipstick like years ago and I could never bear the price so I never purchased it. So fast forward to now, I really wanted to see if the hype surrounding this product was real. I have to say that this is certainly a unique shade and I do believe the shade was slightly reformulated at one point, but now it's kind of like a cool, toned beige and for me immediately I'm like you know abort mission like that is going to wash me out but but weirdly enough I feel like it just adds a really cool kind of edge to a more natural makeup look I think the shade is really unique and it looks nice um, but the formula itself is a little bit on the thinner side it's one of these kind of sheer balmy textures and I was hoping for a little bit more hydration. I think it's just a little bit too thin for my preference. I tend to prefer something a little bit more balmy, something with a little bit more comfort, something that's going to make my lips look a little bit more plush. And I just found that this was not that product. That being said, I was able to get one of these little samples of all the shades of the Rouge Coco flashes. And what I've found with this formula of lipstick is that the shades are where this product shines. I swatched out all of the shades that they gave me. So hopefully that ends up being helpful. I'll insert swatches. When you look at the shades, that is where this product for me is really unique. The shade Boy, again, just a very, very unique shade. Very hard to dupe, but the shade Shake, I actually find to be absolutely gorgeous. So in general, if you find a shade that you like, maybe look into the formula, but if you prefer something a little bit richer, I think this will be a little bit too thin for you, and it was for me. Personally, with my preferences, I would pass on this formula, and instead, 
I would look into these. These are the Rouge Coco Hydrating Lipsticks. I just recently talked about these because I've just been loving them. I have the shade Mademoiselle as well as Suzanne, and Suzanne is what is on my lips today. You can see I've been talking for like over an hour now, probably, and it just fades to this beautiful, stained effect. I'll add a little bit more. This is the kind of formula that I was hoping to get with the Rouge Coco Flashes. It's a very cult favorite product and for me it's for a reason. They're really really excellent. These really have a beautiful kind of creamy formula. They have kind of medium pigmentation so for me these are truly like a lipstick product. They're not a balm but they have a nice balminess to them that I think makes them really comfortable and approachable. It's more of a kind of satiny look as well, so it's not going to be overwhelmingly glossy. It's not going to be too matte, so you still get just a nice kind of natural plush pillowy look. It fades really evenly as well. It just adds that like touch of color. I love the shade Mademoiselle because it's kind of my perfect kind of rosy mauve nude shade that I find looks really flattering on me. But Suzanne is the first one that I picked up and I am like really, really into this color. The shades are just really unique. And when the formula is just a good, solid go-to formula, I go back and I'm like, what shade should I pick up next? They're just these beautiful, effortless shades. The formula is so comfortable. It just looks really, really luxe on the lips. So yeah, I would absolutely recommend these. Now let's talk about what is on my cheeks. This is the Chanel Powder Blush Formula. I have it in the shade Rose Bronze. Apparently this is one of their more popular shades. So this formula is incredibly, incredibly finely milled. It's very, very soft. It's not necessarily silky, like a silicone kind of texture, but you can tell that it's been finely, finely milled. It's buildable. Um, I really like it because I can just kind of stamp the product on and get a little bit more pop and pigment that way. You guys know I really, really like my blush, so I want a little bit more impact and color. But because it's so finely milled, you can also get a really sheer kind of wash of color. This shade in particular is also interesting. Um, for me, this is the kind of shade that I wished NARS Orgasm would be. It's more of a peachy pink with just like a slight shift of gold. No shimmer or anything like that. It just adds almost like a slightly um, dimensional kind of blush look. I feel like it kind of shapes the cheeks in a really pretty way. I think it's a solid product. I just think there are other options for a little bit of a smaller price tag. Next, let's talk about some mascaras. So Chanel has been known for their mascaras, specifically the Chanel Le Volume. I actually got this free sample of it, so I was able to give you a little review. And they also gave me the Le Base mascara. So, so the Le Volume is exactly that. This is quite a volumizing mascara. I would say this is kind of like the smoky eye volume mascara that a lot of us are looking for when we want more rich black impact. I'm actually kind of surprised at how much I like it. I love just the ultra black volumized look, but it's just not something that I see myself using for every day. It's really only for certain looks because I prefer a mascara that's a little bit more fluttery. I like for my lashes to look black and lengthened and volumized, but I don't want it to kind of be distracting. And for me, unless you're wearing kind of a smoky eye with this, it's going to be a little bit distracting. It's not clumpy per se, but it's certainly a little bit of a thicker formula. So yeah, for me, it's kind of like a couple times a year kind of mascara. And for the price, I would certainly pass in my opinion because you can get a similar look with some more affordable mascaras. And as for the Le Base, I think that this is not good at all actually. I felt like it actually made my lashes droop. Um, you can see in the side by side, I use this on one eye and no primer on the other. And though this did give you more of a separated look, 
you got less curls. So I felt like the trade-off wasn't there. And the mascara that I'm wearing today is the Chanel Inmitable Mascara. And I've actually really been liking it. It's more of a separated but volumized look. And I think what's really nice about this one is just how black it is. More of kind of a separated volume. It kind of pulls a few lashes together to give them a more fanned out, um, separated look, but it's not ultra, ultra defining, certainly more defining than like the Le Volume. So I think for that reason, it also helps to frame the eyes in a really pretty way, especially because it's more black and rich. But again, CoverGirl Lash Blast, My Essence Lash Princess, these are all really affordable. So for me, I would say, you know, splurge on some of the other products I talked about rather than going with their mascaras, in my opinion. I will do a very, very quick recap for you guys and let you guys know the products that I would and wouldn't recommend. Le Beige Water Fresh Tint, 100% yes. Perfect summertime sheer makeup. Absolutely traceless on the skin. Literally, there's no other product that I've tried like it. I also really, really like the Le Beige Healthy Glow Foundation. It's what I'm wearing on my skin. Just a really natural but thin look. Overall, just a good luxury foundation. As far as the liquid highlight, I would personally skip. I think there are other luxury cream highlights that I would go for. Um, anything that Charlotte Tilbury does, I think is a good highlight. Even though I like the Admittable Mascara, I do have others that are much cheaper, so I would probably pass on this as well. I would pass on the La Volume and the La Base. My favorite luxury mascara right now is actually the Rowan Cake Mascara. It's not super expensive, but it's definitely a little bit more up there. And that's the one that I can really recommend to kind of splurge on because it just gives you like a butterfly fluttery effect to the lashes. It's really, really gorgeous. So personally, I would rather repurchase that one than purchase these. As far as eye products go, Chanel New Moon is like, it's my new go-to. It's my new favorite. It's such an incredible, glossy, glittery formula. One of the best glitter toppers that I've used, certainly in top three. Seriously, so freaking good. Um, I also really like Pantene Bronze as well. This feels more of like a solid formula. It's not like, oh my gosh, it's so glossy and glittery. You know, it's harder to romanticize a product like this. It's so stable. It always looks good. It lasts a long time. And I think those products are particularly underrated within the makeup realm. And this liquid shadow, I don't hear anyone really talking about it, but if you want something that's a liquid shadow that doesn't look drying, still adds a really nice shine to the lids as well as color, this is definitely beautiful. I honestly really like the blush too. I do understand though it's a little bit expensive for what you get. I would skip the Rouge Coco flash unless there's a color that really speaks to you and I would splurge on the Rouge hydrating lipsticks. These are the lip product that I would spend the extra coin on. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I will leave everything linked down below for you guys. If you found all of these demos helpful, definitely make sure to give this video a thumbs up so that I know. Make sure to subscribe as well and I will see you all in my next one.